The left mourns the loss of a magazine, like the loss of a friend. We had so much quality time together. You understood me like no other. Well, the motivation to save these outlets is both political and cultural, because if one magazine or publication newspaper is allowed to die off, the rest may follow, along with their influence. Enter Time Magazine. Now, bleeding circulation for years and unable to translate its print appeal into the Internet age, Time has gone from a circulation, check this out, of nearly 20 million worldwide to just a few million, primarily web-based folks. The only really thing keeping it going is its two flagships. The Person of the Year issue comes out in December, and its 100 most influential issue. The latter, by the way, was released with PR today worthy of a Queen State visit. The magazine created a special series of covers for the issue. Ten-time Grammy winner Taylor Swift, two-time Golden Globe winner Sandra Oh, and the House Speaker Nancy Pelosi are cover stars. Our very own Gail King was also chosen to grace a cover. Now, that's one surefire way of getting your magazine featured on CBS Morning News. Pick one of the anchors. We like Gail. By the way, aside from the obvious influential folks, Barr, Mueller, and Trump, Time included a few other curious choices, like Kavanaugh accuser Christine Blase Ford. About her, guest profiler Kamala Harris wrote, Her story, spoken while holding back tears, shook Washington and the country. Through her courage, she forced the country to reckon with an issue that has too often been ignored and kept in the dark. Totally political. What Blase Ford did and said last October was to accuse a man of sexual misconduct 30 years prior with zero corroboration. And remember, she initially sent an anonymous note accusing Kavanaugh, which was then leaked to the Washington Post. Most importantly, this icon, at least according to Time, failed to derail the nomination. So exactly how is that so influential? Well, as for Taylor, Taylor Swift, I mean, she continues to be an entertainment juggernaut, incredibly talented. But her big move this past year was to throw in with the Democrats and endorse Marsha Blackburn's Senate opponent in Tennessee. Well, Blackburn decided to shake her off, and she won. Not so swift, perhaps, to think your pop music translates into any great political appeal. Again, rather than be introspective, about its loss of appeal in middle America and beyond, Time magazine just keeps clinging to the old liberal model of journalism and, of course, clings to political correctness. We have 48 women on the list this year, up from 45 last year. Uh, when we first started doing this in 2004, I just went back and counted, there were 24. Um, you know, obviously still uh, ways to go in our society. The list is in some ways a reflection of, of our society. No, 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 no. The list is not a reflection of our society. The rest of society doesn't throw itself a glamorous party, by the way, like time does, when it's losing money by the moment. Well, speaking of glamorous, model and wife of John Legend, Chrissy Teigen, was also chosen as one of the 100 most influential. Now, she's also known for her vicious attacks on President Trump, and she was chosen, according to the profile, because, quote, all her life, Chrissy Teigen has liked to eat. She's not shy about that or anything else, really. Well, that's nice and innovative, I guess, eating. But did most Americans like her take on female empowerment during last week's Democrat retreat? I think it's possible to be really angry all the time. If there was one word you would help, particularly women, use more frequently, what would that one word be? F*** you. <laughs> I'm sorry, speak of the mouth. You're very... Oh, okay. <laughs> the big shock that joining the Trump-hating model on the list is a Trump-hating comedian, Trump-hating filmmaker, and a Trump-hating TV producer. Well, and for good measure, they threw in Michelle Obama. Time Magazine <laughs> is sort of the last gasp uh, almanac of the elite. 
But at least the elites don't admit defeat easily, do they? You've got to hand that to them. There's perhaps no better example than how they've dealt with Mueller's no collusion and no obstruction findings. There's ample evidence of collusion in plain sight. What we're talking about here is the difference between conduct that rises to the level of criminality uh, and conduct that is deeply unethical, unpatriotic, and corrupt that may not be criminal. The attorney general should recuse himself immediately. He has no business touching any part of this investigation. Okay, well, with tomorrow's release of the Mueller report, minus redactions, we're bound to see more gyrations from the same suspects and from political activists who raised millions off the constant defamation that Trump was some type of sellout to Russia or a traitor. They've moved, by the way, from he conspired with the Russians to Barr is just redacting stuff to, I don't know, help Trump. There is absolutely no reason that there should be redactions for the report as provided to Congress. Our first priority is getting the fully unredacted report because the counterintelligence findings may not even be covered in that report. I think it leaves a very strong impression on the American people that this is a, a form of political editing that is taking place. Well, and tonight they're grasping at something new. The timing of Bill Barr's press conference. Is this press conference a way for Barr to get out ahead of any information that we might find in the report and put his spin on it? If you we want the public to take this report seriously and to believe that the Justice Department is credible, you would probably think twice about putting the head of the Justice Department out on TV to do spin for you. He becomes the first cabinet secretary to plunge into the deep end of Trump's conspiracy pool. Well, speaking of deep end, uh, we've gone from Trump's guilty of sedition to the AG is guilty of aggressive scheduling. Why don't they just wait for the report to come out, read it, and then gripe? Okay, decide if you have issues with it at that point. If this is the freakout happening tonight, I shouldn't even think about what's going to happen tomorrow. We're going to have a great show on tap. And in the end, the Mueller team, well, they spun their wheels, and in the process... What they ended up doing is throwing a lot of mud at good people. Sure, there were indictments and guilty pleas, but between A.G. Barr and Inspector General Michael Horowitz, we may just find out that the supposed guilty ones were just deep state pawns. The Mueller probe should have never been started in the first place. We told you that they would find nothing on the president and that its origins were politically tainted. And we were right. And the left was wrong. Even an op-ed in the Washington Post admitting this, Fox News was right and the others were wrong. Even regular viewers of CNN and MSNBC must certainly recognize the straws being grasped to justify sticking with a conspiracy theory that has been largely debunked. Well, of course, the hardcore socialists and their media co-conspirators will cling to the Russian delusion for as long as they can or simply shift to new targets within Trump world. They're such anti-Trump fanatics that they can't see that they're committing ongoing self-sabotage to themselves personally and to their party and to their movement. Like their creaky best of lists, their time is finally long since up. And that's the angle.